In this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways on how you can connect your Sony Alpha device to your mobile phone, as well as the differences in some of the features that you get with the Sony Imaging Edge app with different camera models in the Sony Alpha line. That's a lot to talk about. Let's dive right into it. The first step is to download the Sony Imaging Edge app. If you're not an Apple user, it's in the Google Play Store. I'm gonna to go to open. In the app, I already have all of my Sony cameras saved. If you're on the Sony a7S III, you wanna make sure that the camera's on. I'm gonna to go to Menu. In the Network tab, underneath Transfer and Remote, the very top one is Control with Smartphone. We're gonna click on that and make sure Control with Smartphone is on. If you're on an APS sensor camera like the Sony Alpha 6400, Control with Smartphone is under the first page, and I want to go down to Control with Smartphone, fourth one down, make sure that it is on. If you're on the Sony a7 III, it's right here. The first network page, the fifth one down is control with smartphone. I'm gonna make sure that this is turned on. Now that control with smartphone is turned on, I want to go to connect with new camera inside the app. At this point, you have three different options to connect your mobile device to the Sony Alpha camera. You can do scan with QR code, one touch NFC, or you can type in manually the SSID and password for the camera. I'm gonna show you how to do all three, but personally I think scanning with the QR code is the easiest way to access the camera, so I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna hit scan with QR code, and it will bring it up on my camera. And then on my Sony a7S III, underneath that same control with smartphone menu, I'm going to go to connection. And after a little bit of loading, now we have this QR code on the screen and I'm going to bring my camera over the top and immediately it says, do you wanna join it? And boom, that will get you into the camera that way. Start remote operation and I'm inside the camera. To connect to the camera with One Touch NFC, if that's available on your phone, right here is the NFC on the camera. And on the 7 Plus, I find that the sensor is around wherever the camera is. Hit tap here, I'm gonna hit okay. And ready to scan, so now I go over here to scan it, and immediately it says join, I hit uh, join. Starts remote operation, hit OK, and immediately I am already using the apps. And the third way to connect to your Sony camera is to use the SSID slash password method. So I'm gonna go click that, hit enter SSID password. On my Sony a7S III, control with smartphone, the connection tab. And right here, this is for the QR code. But if you notice down here, it says connect with password. So I need to hit my C4 button to bring up that screen. Click it. And on that screen will give you all of the information that you need to connect to your camera. I'm gonna hit connect, join that Wi-Fi network. And if this is your first time connecting the phone to the camera, it'll work just fine. But anytime I try and connect my phone to my camera a second time, after my phone has saved the Wi-Fi network and password, I get this error, which is okay because it's actually faster to connect your phone to your camera after the credentials are already saved on it. So whenever you wanna reconnect the camera, I find it easy just to go into menu, control, and hit connection and make sure that it's broadcasting Wi-Fi. And then once it's doing that, all you have to do in the app is go to the camera that you want to connect to and just tap it. Make sure that it's broadcasting Wi-Fi. It tells you that on the app, just hit okay, join. And before this runs out of battery, hopefully I can show you that it connects really quick. Start remote operation and boom, I'm back into it. When using the Sony Imaging Edge app, I found that newer camera models like the Sony a7S III have much more features than prior camera models like the a7 III and my a6400. For example, check this out. In movie mode, I can now click and tap and pull focus straight from the phone. I can do that also on the camera, but I just wanna show it to you here on the app. Now that's in movie mode. When I switch it over to manual, watch what happens. I try and tap on the screen, and this may be user error. Maybe there's some sort of function that I'm not seeing. I do see that there's this little logo up here in the top corner for the feature to tap on the screen, but when I'm trying to pull focus for photos, it won't allow me to tap on my phone like it allows me to tap on the touch screen on the Sony a7S III. If it does work in picture mode, please let me know in the comments down below, because obviously I would want to use that functionality as well. 
If I hit display, you have control over these functions. Now my aperture is grayed out because I'm using a specific kind of lens. If I switch this over to A, now I have manipulation of that parameter. If I go to menu on the Sony a7S III, you get way more options available to you here than with prior models. In movie mode, here's what's available to you. You can do white balance, focus mode, D-range optimizer, metering mode, your JPEG image size, aspect ratio, your recording frame rate, live view quality, setting of mode dial. Wow. So I wonder if I can, yeah. So I could actually change this to manual. So I'm in manual mode right now and I can set it to my phone, even though on the dial it says movie mode. That's new, that's pretty cool. Now that I'm in manual mode, you have more options available to you because we're in a picture mode now. Wireless flash, just on and off, flash, drive mode. You can change all of these different parameters. Date and time, you can change to whatever the smartphone is. For the smartphone settings, let me go ahead and turn this on. Let me see if that will change. Boom. So if I just hit this, it automatically changes the date and time on the camera to what's on your phone. That is cool. On the phone itself, you can get a rule of thirds grid. So now I have a rule of thirds grid on my phone, which is really nice. If I were to take a picture, anytime you take a picture, I'm gonna go back. That picture will now be in my photos right here. If I go back to the Imaging Edge app, I just have to hit start and I can go back to my remote operation. One of the drawbacks of this app from before with previous models is anytime you go into the menu system on the camera, it breaks the Wi-Fi connection to the camera and you have to start the whole process over again. But check this out, on the a7S III, I hit menu and normally this would break the connection. But as you can see, I'm still broadcasting to the phone, which is cool because now I have a feed on my phone even though I'm on the menu system in the a7S III. You can mirror, and if you were to turn on view only mode, it's just a way to turn your whole screen into a monitor. If you notice with the Sony a7 III, if I go to menu, only options available to me are white balance, recording mode, and movie format. Alternatively, if I were to switch this camera mode, we have white balance, self timer, continuous shooting or single shooting, wireless flash, and you can see the camera information. Down below for the smartphone settings, we have this. But as you can see with the A7, you can't switch as many parameters as the Sony A7S III. And here we can see that tap functionality for focusing does not work on the Sony A7 as it did in movie mode on the Sony A7S III. If this was helpful, don't forget to leave me a like. If you know another Sony shooter that could benefit from this knowledge, you could share the video with them. And if you're new here and you like my teaching style, then the subscribe button's right there, or you could check out some more of my videos. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope that you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.